Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for the Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. This month, in April, we're honoring the Vietnam War and highlighting some features from that. Right now, we're in after plot, looking at the main fire control computers for the secondary guns. Today, we're going to talk about the 5 inch 38 secondary battery guns and how they related to the Vietnam War. They were one of the most iconic weapons of World War II, uh, but they continued in service almost to the present day. This is the Ford Mark I Able. It's a 1930s electromechanical analog computer. And as little as one sailor could input commands into this computer with information they're receiving from Mark 37 directors up above and feed it into the gun mounts where they can aim and fire the guns. We're inside one of the ship's 5-inch magazines. This magazine feeds two twin 5-inch 38 caliber guns above us. Shells like this one, weighing 55 pounds, were stored in racks behind me, approximately 500 rounds per gun. The first step in loading was to take one of these shells off of the rack and drop it into the dredger hoist. The dredger hoist is a conveyor belt that will hoist the shell up to the handling room. After the shell has been hoisted up to the gun, next comes the powder. It's stored in 22 pound brass canisters that are housed inside of these aluminum powder cans. These cans would be stacked here in the powder magazine and the loaders would pass them through the scuttle to the other side. The other side of this door is where the shells were stored, where we just were. On that side, the powder is passed into the dredger hoist, and they're both hoisted up to the handling room. In peacetime, the handling rooms would be probably empty, but in wartime, ready service ammunition was stocked up like this. These are our powder canisters in their aluminum cans. You would remove the brass canister from the can and put it here on the hoist to be sent up to the gun mount. Our ready service shells are stored in racks here. You would pull one out and bring it over to the fuse setting projectile hoist and insert it upside down. The hoist would activate the fuse in the shell as it's raising it to the gun. If we were running out of ammunition in here, the dredger hoists like this one, which we saw the lower ends of in the handling room, would send up more powder and more shells. If you look up, you can also see the gearing where the gun is rotated. Now we're in the gun house for the 5 inch 38 caliber gun. This one has the breech closed and is ready to fire. This one still needs to be loaded. Powder canisters come up through the deck here and are put into position like this one. The shells come up from the fuse setting projectile hoist and kick this so that it would drop out and I set it on this rail and roll it in. Now that the gun has the, both the projectile and the powder, it can be rammed into the breech of the gun. This pad at the back is the rammer. It pushes that in, the breech block, then closes like this one. When this pops up, the rammer is directly above it. It's kicked up onto this brass rail, and then it slides back into position to load the next round. Navy gun crews could achieve rates of fire of one round every four seconds, and under extreme situations, fired 22 rounds a minute out of these guns. This is where spent casings were ejected from the gun after a shot was fired. Casings would then come out and roll along the deck. When you visit the ship, you can still see the crescent indentations in the teak wood deck from these rounds ejecting. During one gun shoot, February 22nd, 1969, the battleship New Jersey was supporting Marines ashore. As they called in coordinates, it became apparent that NVA forces were all around them. In five and a half hours, the ship fired over 1,100 rounds out of these five-inch guns in support of the Marines. Shell casings like this 
built up around the back of the gun so heavy that they had to be removed by crew members before the guns could continue to train and rotate on new targets. If you'd like to see more of spaces like this, join us every Saturday and Sunday at 11 for a $30, 90-minute long guided tour of these spaces and other ones relating to our main battery guns. Join us every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 2 o'clock for a 30-minute guided tour of the spaces relating to the secondary battery guns. I'll see you on board.